It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Miami Dolphins and the Washington Commanders. And it's all up next. We are just inside the Beltway, about 10 miles east of the Capitol Dome as we come to you from FedEx Field here in Landover. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Miami Dolphins taking on the Washington Commanders. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. A CD, these Commanders, a last place ball club in 2022. Well, in most cases, you'd say that was a lost season, but they finished 8-8-1, eight, eight, and one, 500. That would have won the NFC South. What kind of a chance do you give them in what is certainly a loaded NFC East? And you're exactly right about the division, so you have to be cautious about what you think with this team. They've got to continue to play excellent defense and get some improvement on the offensive side of the ball and establish who their quarterback is going to be. Meanwhile, for the visiting Dolphins, we know about the weapons on offense on the perimeter. But you think this is a team, Charles, that needs to step it up defensively to go to the next level? I do. And they have the pieces in place. They have excellent players. Perhaps the new system that's been brought in will give them that edge that they need in the AFC East. The veteran Joey Sly set to get us started, and we are underway in our nation's capital. Braxton Berrios now from his end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Dolphins set to go on offense for the first time behind their 25-year-old quarterback. Now in his fourth NFL season to a tongue of Iloa. Injuries overshadowed a great season from Tua last season. He led a Miami passing game that was one of the best in the league, and even more importantly, took them to the postseason for the first time in six years. That jump they were looking for from him, it absolutely occurred. Now a play fake. Here's Tonga Bailoa. And that'll be off the mark too far out in front, and it's incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. Second and ten. Looking to pass to him. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Good work on the scamper by Tonga Vailoa. It's a first down. That's the first time he's called his own number, but he's got to be overjoyed with the results. He wasn't just going to settle for a modest gain. To me, he was determined to come through with a big message to a defense that slept on him in the pocket. Tua now on first down. And going deep for Hill. And it's knocked away and incomplete. And that might have been a situation where even though you don't hit on the deep throw, you at least put in the defenders' minds early in the game that we're going to press the ball deep against your secondary. And that can have a ripple effect on how they function throughout. So line of scrimmage still the 39 on second and 10. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. That swung out to Mostert. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and 10. They tried to swing it out left into the flat, but the defense, they were very principled there. It felt very West Coast offense, didn't it? You know, you know their expression, right? On a West Coast offense, when they throw the ball, it's either going to be a touchdown or a check down, meaning they like to press it downfield. If they don't have it, swing it out, which is exactly what we saw there. But how about the great pursuit and tackle to make a nice play? Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. You get a sense of what this game plan might be. They think they can take a few home run shots against this defense. They tried it there in the opening drive, but that ball's incomplete. Jake Bailey on now to punt here on fourth down. Back deep here, Jamison Crowder. This will be fielded at the 17. 
It's a 42-yard punt, but eight on the return. And it will be Washington football now with a first and 10. The commander's set to go to work on offense, and they've handed the controls to this man in his second NFL season, former Tar Heel Sam Howell. Howell got the nod from commander's leadership to be the team's starter this year. A nice bump for last year's fifth round pick. One start as a rookie and didn't look bad at all winning the team's finale. And let's not forget, this is a guy who was once viewed as a first round pick. So there's plenty of promise hidden beneath the surface. Now first and 10 here for Hal and the Commanders at their own 25 yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Buying time to his left. The improv on the scramble there gets him six and then will be second down. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him, put together a solid game to bring up Sengible. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and a new set of downs. From the 32-yard line now, here's second and four. Faking the handoff, Howell. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Back to throw, Howell. And he is caught, and he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Powell. Going right back to Dodson. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. From the 48-yard line, here's second and a yard. They'll run for the first time with Antonio Gibson. Two yards is the pickup, and it'll be first down Washington. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs, and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 49-yard line. Now the second-year man from Alabama, it's Brian Robinson. He had to fight that time, ran through one tackle, but ultimately he's only going to get back to the line of scrimmage. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss, couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. Here's Hal. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. Well, that was his first target of the game, and it's going to take at least one more target to get him on the board. Took a nice substantial hit to jar that catch loose from him. Incomplete pass. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Al, he'll look to throw it. Thomas has got it, complete. And he can only manage to get this to the 45-yard line. Well short of the first. Short completion, just four yards. And that'll bring up fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. And now the putter, Tress Way, as he sends this one away. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. So Miami coming out for their second drive. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach. Can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Here's Tonga Bailoa on first and 10. He'll get this into the hands of Braxton Berrios. 
And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. A good pick up there, 21 yards. And time to give some credit to the big fellows, the offensive line here, because you've got to have good protection on crossing routes because you've got to give your receiver time to work all the way across the field. That time, be able to scan the field, spot his receiver moving left to right, and make a good, accurate throw. Thank you, guys. Now their 31-year-old running back, Raheem Mostert. And good vision there as he's across midfield and down to the 45-yard line. That one good for 13 at a Dolphin first down. That's a very nice game there, a confidence-building run. Love the execution up front, and the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. From Commander's territory now, it's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Once again, it's Mostert. And he's able to get this one down to about the 40. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. On play action, here's Tua. Shakes off the sack. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. And he's only hit on two of his first six passes. Time for a quick quarterback regroup here with a big third down coming up. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 29-yard line. The third down conversion successful, a gain of 11. He's a talented runner, and that means he's always looking for bigger and bigger gains when he takes off. Certainly found some bonus yards there beyond the first down marker, and this early drive will continue with that extra jolt from his legs. On first and 10, it's Mostert. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Here's Tua. It's Hill, complete. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 14. 11 more yards there, and this methodical drive continues. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere, and they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people, but you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well, and that's what they just did on that play. Here's a toss play right to Moster. And he's brought down. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. They need about the length of the football here on first and goal. Mostert. He is going nowhere in a hurry as he is going to lose yardage here in a big way. Yikes, a four-yard loss really sets him back now for second down. Sometimes you get all those big guys down there in one spot, and there's just nowhere to go. And in this case, the defensive tackle used his strength and swallowed him up. From back at the four, here's second and goal. Now Tua. And they're going to get to him, a sack. Sack back at the nine-yard line. Jonathan Allen, the former first-round pick, getting in there to bring him down. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it and ended up on the ground. And now can they reverse the trend on third and goal with the last two plays having gone backwards. Two are going to throw. And they'll get this on the screen to Mostert. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Well, there certainly was a lot going on on that play. Every option in the end zone, covered. No place to go with the ball. Had to swing it out to the back. A good job running and getting him tackled in the open field. Oh, they pitch to the tight end. It's 
it's a fake. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. And the commander defense able to hold. But like the hook's paw there, right? They decided to go ahead and fake it and try and pick up a first down. But how about how they executed defensively and smothered that one? I know back from my time frame, everyone has responsibilities, even rushing on a field goal attempt. You've got the tight end, you've got the wing, gap, wing back, you might have the guy out of the backfield, but they executed that well, yeah. really stuck to what they needed to do. It wasn't just 11 guys trying to block it. They were ready, they got it done. They'll throw on first down, here's Howell. That's complete, Terry McLaurin with it. And they'll get him down up past the 15. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, Never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. And they're going to motion dots into the left. And he's going to handle it on the touch pass. Oh, and that is well read defensively. A great job of setting the edge. And that little touch pass is going to turn into a loss. Well, I think the hope is, you know, with a touch pass like that, they, maybe you catch the defense off guard, but... They were all over that one. And it is the kind of play that works better against certain defenses. And this clearly was the wrong one to run into. Really nice job getting him down. Oh, that's in a double coverage and intercepted. Picked up by Javon Holland. And he's going to return it to the 21-yard line. That throw, Charles, over the middle of the field and a few too many bodies in there got picked. That's a normal situation too, isn't it? No matter how hard you try and spread the field sometimes, there's always going to be a traffic jam, it feels like, towards the middle. And if there's any type of a missed throw or maybe the ball's tipped or just too many bodies in the area, an interception can result. with Mostert up the middle. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Early down stuffs to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Second and eight coming from the 19. Throwing now is Tungabailoa. Touchdown, Dolphins! Braxton Berrios from 19 yards away. And the Dolphins use the early turnover to get on the board first here in this one. This is similar to baseball where you walk the leadoff hitter and you don't expect him to come around and score. Almost impossible. Anytime a defense has to defend a short field, you usually end up seeing the result we saw, giving up points. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. And that makes it 7-0 Dolphins. They had the short field and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Washington ready to try again on offense. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive in particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to want to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. Big yardage that time for Washington. And even 50 yards. The timing was absolutely true as he caught it working. 
looking across the field. Plenty of space for him to roam, but notice how he keeps his head on a swivel, looking for defenders who may crop up out of nowhere. That turned into a big play. Exactly 50 yards on that last play as they just go from 125 to the other for first and 10. Al now to throw it. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stuff. Five yards, now it's third and five. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Throwing here, Howell. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taking them no time at all to get down here, and now they're set up for the first and goal. And Howe will throw it. And this is going to be incomplete. So many offenses want to include their running backs into their passing offense and be able to swing the ball out or check it down to them. But sometimes those guys are just not as comfortable catching the ball as they are running it. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. Howell out of the shotgun. Uh, he's got it. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. That time the completion goes for four yards and we're set up with a third and goal. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now from our nation's capital and it's Washington in possession of the football as they'll see what they can do on third and goal. Howe looking to throw again. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. The Dolphins do the job defensively there, and now it brings up fourth. So they opted to pass for it on third and goal. Let's see what they do on fourth and goal. Well, I think they threw it with the idea that if they didn't get it, they would go for it on fourth and goal. So they've got another play in their pocket. They're going to have to call it right now. No field goal here. And the holder's going to keep it. He's going to try to run for it. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. And the Dolphins celebrate their goal line stand. Oh, that was an intriguing call. You got a chip shot field goal. Tight game. Why not just take the three? I know that not all the old rules apply in today's NFL. And in fact, I'd love to have an analytics coach here with us right now to say why that was probably a good play. I don't know if even the analytics coach would have <laughs> said that. That seemed like a bad play. Take the points there and move on. On first down, Tonga Bailoa. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. On second down, Mostert. And he's taken down, but able to get this up to the 20-yard line. 46 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. Veteran running back like him, we've seen a lot of those chunk carries in his career. And that's why you don't just look at his birth certificate and decide when a guy is done, right? Because you know as well as I do in this league, as soon as you hit 30, they're looking to let you go if you're a running back. Sometimes there's a little tread left on the tires. Now a play fake. Here's Tonga Bailoa. That one complete to Hill. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Nice play call. A little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. Here's a second and five now from the 25. Oh, 
Tua sets up to pass it. This one complete to Jalen Waddle. And Waddle going to have a Dolphins first down as he'll get this up across the 30-yard line. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. Throw right side, going to be caught here by Waddle. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and that'll make it second down. They'll run right side with Mostert. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. They'll try and run here with Mostert. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. How about Jonathan Allen there pushing up field to make the stop behind the line? Defensively, he has been a presence in their backfield in the first half. Had a sack earlier, and now he comes up with a big tackle for a loss. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. Now they'll throw with Tagovailoa. Now a quick throw there is incomplete. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. Washington on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third down and 12. Looking to pass. Tua. And that will be incomplete. That is certainly one way to frustrate a quarterback when there's extra defenders on the field. Dime package, lots of speed, no space to fit in the football. On is Jake Bailey to send this one away. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. And the Washington offense set to take over again. Howell and the Commanders come up now first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Short throw there, caught by Thomas. So give them five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it's second down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. Second and five. Robinson up the middle. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 15 yards to pick up, first down Washington. Nothing too fancy, just a carry up the middle, but a successful carry up the middle against his 3-4 defense. And to be able to do that, what do you have to control? The nose guard, right? Got to be able to move him, otherwise you're not getting anything up the middle. Nice job by the center. Got a little help from one of his friends playing guard. A nice burst there as they'll get about seven that time on the first down run. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Now second and three. Again, it's Robinson. 
Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Third and two, here's Howell. to his running back out of the backfield. And he's going to have a commander's first down as this defense unable to hold. It's a seven-yard gain there on third and two. Short yardage situation. You have to wonder if they thought that they are just going to run it inside. But you have to be cognizant of the back slipping out of the backfield trying to find some open space. And that's exactly what he does to the tune of a first down. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Right up to that point, I was about to say, he's had a pretty good half catching the football, but let's just be honest about it. He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. Here's second and ten. Back to throw, Howell. That's complete to Robinson. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 43. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. But he's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. On second down, a run with Gibson. Running right through it. Inside the 15 before they drop it. That burst good for 20 and a first down. It's a big plays in the passing game on this drive. Here's one out of the running game. So the passing game loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Hand off to Robinson out of the shotgun. And he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. So that time they got the left guard with a hold. And let's face it, in today's ball, you might have that 330-pound guy you're supposed to clear out of there. You might need a little bit of extra help by grabbing the jersey and trying to ride him out. And he is out of bounds, but first he gets it inside the 10 to the 7. It'll be a gain of 15 on the play, and it'll make it second down. That was huge after being behind the chains on first down to make this second very manageable. Yeah, how much pride do you have in an offense on first down to get that kind of yardage? Because it actually opens up your playbook on second down. You can run it, you can throw it, you keep a defense off balance. I like that phrase, stand ahead of the chains, and they're doing exactly that. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. The touch and time here critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Powell. Touchdown, Washington. Logan Thomas. A seven-yard touchdown ground. And the Commanders are an extra point away from drawing level. As a general rule, quarterbacks don't want to lock in on a receiver before the ball is snapped. But in this case, based on the matchup he thought he was going to get, it was favorable for his tight end. He locked in on him early and found him for a touchdown. Joey Sly on for the extra point.
It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that drive, 12 plays in length, and it was capped off by the Logan Thomas touchdown catch. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Miami's offense set and ready to go. Now they had a long drive going last time, but it stalled out. But still, maybe something positive to carry forward from that last drive. Well, a few different things that you carry forward. Number one, as you noted, they were moving it pretty well, so that gives them a lot of confidence. The second part is, keep your defense off the field. Mm -hmm. gives them a chance to rest up a little bit. And last but not least, uh -oh. you've taken a good look at what you've done on offense, noted where the weaknesses are, and you know when you want to come back to them. Like when you're organized with your points. Well Point done. A, B, and C. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 72 yards rushing now for Mostert as he picks up a first down. They had three tight ends in on that set, and they were really good at blocking for their running back. And give them a lot of credit because in football nowadays, tight ends coming out of college often don't block very often. These guys have really developed into superior blockers, and that's why they use them in this formation so often. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Off of play action, Tonga Bailoa. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Hill. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Two to Tyreek for the Miami first. Second and short, that's a rundown, so it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling. Ron Rivera scowling down on the sideline, and he's thrown out the red challenge flag. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Here's Tua. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. All right, say it with me now. There are a lot of different words we come up with. Maybe we go back and forth after that play, getting his toes tapped down to make that catch. Crafty? Yep. Wiley. Oh, definitely. All the veteran names. You name it, has every move in the book and continued to get better throughout his career so he can make that type of a catch. Tongue of Iloa to throw on second down here. That's caught by the Notre Dame man. It's Durham Smythe. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. This will be caught. It's Waddle. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. And as a quarterback, you always want to exploit gaps in the defense, and he finds one here. Crossing route, working from right to left across the field. And once you get defenders going in the wrong direction, it is awfully hard for them to pivot back, and you end up getting the first down. Here's Mostert. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. 
two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. Now Tua. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. Durham Smythe, a five-yard touchdown. And the Dolphins have taken the lead. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. And now, of course, all scoring plays are reviewed, and I think they're going to take an extra long look at this one. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So take away the touchdown there as that's going to be ruled an incomplete pass. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Going to the air. Tug of Iloa. And then it's caught. Touchdown Miami. Braxton Berrios with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Dolphins have moved out in front in the second quarter and already his second touchdown reception. Absolutely the definition of a difference maker here in this first half. Clearly one of his quarterback's favorite targets in this game. And I figure he's going to draw a little more attention and coverage moving forward. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And that makes the score 14-7. to Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Back onto the field now, the commander's offense. Well, certainly they'd rather have the scenario they had last time. Now, Charles, remember they had the short field. They took it in the end zone. Now this is going to have to be a longer, more sustained drive if they want to get points. Yeah, a little bit more of a quick strike opportunity last time by where they were on the field, and you're exactly right about that. But now, backed up a little bit. What's that old expression we love to use? Time to matriculate the ball down the field and try and do it again. Now throwing on first down here. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Any questions of how they'd approach this drive? They're answered right there. They come out throwing, and they get a nice pick up here toward the end of the first half. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now he'll look to throw it. Here's a screen for Robinson. Finding space at the 40, and he takes it all the way up to the 47. 17 yards that time and a Washington first. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. Another throw for Howell. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. 
And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins 43. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Again, zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you make throw it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. The commander is going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Pal to the air on first and ten. His throw caught right around the six. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. Fifteen more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field, and just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Al now to throw it to the end zone, but it's incomplete. So many things have to go right for any passing play to work out. Quarterback has to understand the defense, deliver an accurate ball. Receiver has to concentrate and bring it in. Somewhere along the assembly line, something was off with that one. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. Sly able to put this one through. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take, punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. So with three seconds remaining in the half, they will line up to kick this one away. So we've reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Dolphins taking a lead to the locker room. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Coach. This has yeah, certainly been a fun one to watch so far. We knew this was going to be a battle. Quarter, but but we have not been disappointed. This so is the far. kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side can play mistake-free football the rest of the way. Sanders now to kick this one away. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. Here come the Commanders for the first possession of the third quarter. But Charles, we saw a pretty entertaining first half, close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Gauntlet's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. Oh, Hal loses it. And this is picked up by the Dolphins. So they take over not only in enemy territory, but in the red zone at the 16-yard line. The pocket collapsed around him. I know we talk about it a lot, but a QB has to have that sixth sense, doesn't he? He really does, and I know of one team at one point was training their quarterback with that time frame, and any time he didn't get rid of the ball within the, the right amount of time, they would blow a horn or blow a whistle to show him 
this is what that time is, just what you're talking about, training him to understand this is the amount you have, make sure the ball's gone. Didn't happen in this case. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. And he'll go down, brought down at the 20-yard line. Jonathan Allen picks up his second sack of the afternoon. This defense coming out after the half, and if that plays any indicator, Charles, maybe a little refreshed and refocused here for quarters three and four. Yeah, they did really well on that one. That's exactly what they need to keep doing if they want to change their fortunes in this game. Three yards is the pickup, but it leaves them still needing 11 here on third down. I like the call. Inside the red zone, running the toss. Why? They want to get to the edges. They want to see if guys who don't normally make a lot of tackles are willing to actually do that. That usually means the guy's at the cornerback position. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Flush to his right. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. Oh, Brandon, that's a gamer move right there. Facing third down, steps up, calls his own number, and nearly makes the house call. If I'm the coach, I let him take another one right here. Give him a chance to be the first one to hit the end zone after that effort he just gave him. Throwing now is Tungamailoa. Touchdown! Tua fighting his old Alabama teammate, Jalen Waddell. And the Dolphins take advantage of the short field and finish it off with a quick touchdown. A nice connection there, finding his target, and that'll put six up on the board. Just like they drew it up in their playbook and reiterated it on the sidelines, right? Perfect route, a good throw in the defense. They had no answer for that right there. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and that makes it a 21-10 game. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. So out comes Washington's offense to take over. Last time out, they had the fumble. That led to the touchdown. Not a great look on either side of the ball as the defense gave up the points too, Charles. But they've got to take care of the football and do better here on this possession. It's certainly been a tough stretch partner for both of those units, and they kind of put their defensive mates in a really tough spot there by dropping the ball on the ground. But an easy way to make it up to them, get out there now and get some points on this drive. Now first and 10 here for Hal and the Commanders at their 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Throw to the right here, taken in by McLaurin. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Well, that frustration, Charles, it's been building on the defensive side of the ball. And unfortunately there, it turns into a roughing the passer penalty. Yeah, and they should be frustrated because he's picked them apart the entire game, but it's got to come out in a different way. You can't hit him illegally. Stop them downfield the way you're supposed to. So now a fresh set of downs, first and 10 after roughing the passer. Straight ahead, Gibson. And he'll take this ahead for about four, second down coming up. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Second down and a run by Robinson. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half. And that trend is continuing here. 
This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now how? And this is going to be incomplete. Well, how about the coverage we just saw him break out on third down? Dime defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. Here's Tressway now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And he'll get this up just shy of the 30. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. He works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. Two yards on the first down carry, and then followed up by two yards on the second down carry. Well, that's definitely not going to be enough to get the job done. Wasn't the expression three yards in the cloud of dust? <laughs> now they're going to need six on third down to keep the drive going. Now a third and six. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. That is caught. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. It's a gain of 26 as they pick up the first down of the process. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Here's Tonga Bailoa on first and 10. And it's nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. Well, a turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. And that could have been the lifeline they needed. This is a play that could have been made. Instead, it's just going to fall incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Two are going to throw. Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. Another big play right there. And this is where, as an offense, you can really put the hammer down. You've got a double-digit lead, but those other guys, they've been hanging around. A touchdown here could put this game out of reach, and that's a strong step towards getting it done. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Up the middle they go with Moster, and he's brought down right at the five-yard line. Give him two on the play. The yards may start getting a little tougher to come by down here near the goal line. That's good work defensively there on first down, holding them to a short gain. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. One more time with Mostert. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is the time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. And this time he is in. Yes. Raheem Mostert taking it in from two yards out. And the Dolphins had six to their lead. Well, he'd been the workhorse on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with a touchdown run. Sanders now to add the extra point. Russell, 
And the lead is up to 18 now. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it was capped off by a touchdown run from Raheem Mostert. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Now it's Crowder. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. The commander's offense set to take over. I kind of feel like they've reached a do or die point in this game, Charles. If they're gonna try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. First down, Hal to throw. This to McLaurin out on the left side. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football, and right now I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. Powell. And that's going to be incomplete. Uh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. But that's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up. Converged on his man and broke the play up. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. On the counter, this is Robinson. And he'll push forward for a couple to the 34. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Hal. And that is incomplete. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. Here's Tressway now as he's on to punt for Washington. And looking up into the sun, he's able to make the fair catch inside the 20-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt, and it'll be Dolphin football. And here comes Raheem Mostert in the Miami offense. He is knocking on the door for 100 yards in this ball game. And it's so important. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal, just short of it, a little bit over. A little bit over feels better to everyone. Offensive line, running back, team totals, just something magical about breaking that barrier. Now he's right there on the doorstep now. On target over the middle to Hill. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 15 yards is the pick up there and the drive starting very nicely. First down. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Looking to pass to a over the middle and complete to Waddle. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 12 yards there, and the Dolphins have a first down. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Running the counter with Mostert. Able to fight through one tackle. And he'll be taken down at about the 45. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. 
Ball spotted at the 45. Here's a second and eight. Play action. Now it's Tua. It's caught inside the 25. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. An excellent pick up of 34 yards. Frankly, I don't know that this defense knows what to do anymore. Just look at their body language out there. The passing game has absolutely been relentless throughout. So the big play gets them all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Tongue of Iloa working out of the gun. Throw left side taken in by Hill. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. And here he'll get it down to the seven. And now time will be called here as Washington has an injured player down on the field. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Here's Tua. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. It'll go as a loss on the play. Not what you need down here. It's going to be second and goal. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. On second down, Tua. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. Durham Smythe from eight yards out. And the Dolphins get another third quarter touchdown to add on to that lead. Boy, he has been fun to watch throwing the football in this one. It's certainly not fun for that defense, though, Charles. Now up to four touchdown passes in this ball game. Yeah, we're supposed to be neutral, but I'm feeling their pain right now because he has absolutely carved up this secondary. A clinic on how to attack a defense and take them out of the game. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and they open the lead up now to 25. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. This fielded right at the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Here comes the commander's offense back onto the field. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Howell and the Commanders come up now first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. Gets this out quickly to Dotson. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. They completed the screen on the perimeter, but boy, that was textbook defense. Exactly as you're taught to play against a wide receiver screen, and they snuffed it out for a loss of yardage. Second down, Howell now. That one is slant to McLaurin. 
That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Robinson will try to pick it up. And he is not going to get the first down as he'll spot this at about the 28. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. Tua and the rest of the Dolphin offense back out onto the field. He continues to just torch this defense, perfect on the last drive, including his fourth touchdown pass of the game. Similar to hitters that are in that great zone in baseball and they say the ball looks bigger when it's approaching the plate and they're smacking it around. I think for him, the windows to throw into are wide open. Doesn't matter whether they're top. Oh, the commanders are going to get there as he's taken down. The sack recorded. It's a loss of five and now it's second down. We've seen him escape similar situations earlier in the game and get away from pretty good yardage. At that time, they get him down. Yeah, they've had enough evidence that he can get away and run for good yardage, haven't they? That time it felt like, okay, enough of this. Let's play it the right way and get him on the ground before he does any damage. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. And this drive is almost over before it began thanks to a great defensive effort. Sack on first down, followed by an incompletion. One more good rep, and they get off the field. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Tua sets up to pass it, and this is going to be incomplete. Just a disaster of a series here. Third and long, no one open anywhere. This ball just has to be thrown to the sideline. The Dolphins will send out the punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And a fair catch taken here right at about the 40-yard line. And the Washington offense heading out. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. Now how? Open man is Samuel, complete. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's second down and one. Shotgun handoff to Gibson. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Three quarters have come and gone. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now at FedEx Field. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Back to throw. Howell. Over the middle brought in by Dotson. And he's going to get this inside the 30. They get 17 there. Good for a commander's first down. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there, it's going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. 
On first down, Hal. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. Now a second and ten. Throwing here, Howell. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. And this offense on third down today, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and 10. And it's caught on the deflection. And this is going to be a touchdown. He's got them out now to a three-score lead here in the fourth quarter after that one, C.D., and well, he looked right off the line like he knew that that ball was coming his way, and he secured it for six points. Yeah, and I think when you're leading by a healthy margin already, it actually loosens you up and allows you to take maybe a few more chances and definitely play with more confidence because he certainly saw something he could exploit in the defense, and he made sure to let his quarterback know just get it to me. And the rest was all up to him, and he delivered and made it a three-score game. The extra point by Sly is up and good, and that'll cut the lead down to 18. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. Tyreek Hill making his way back out towards the huddle. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Tongue of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll look to Mostert to start things out. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Cameron Curl with the tackle that time. This defense starting to buckle down when they need to, and right now they're winning this fourth quarter, losing the game, but they're winning in the fourth quarter. And what a fine line it is about what they're trying to get done because they're down, so they obviously need the football, need a score, but they can't be so aggressive as to give up their edge, their gaps, and have the offense hit them with a big play. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 120 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. And carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Well, this O-line's been great. They've got the big lead, so give them a pass there, I guess. Yeah, I would think so, because we are grading them on their performance in this game. A lot of pluses in their boxes so far. A full start backs them up five, first and 15. Once again, it's Mostert. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. A loss of two there, second down. And they have just not been able to block him at all throughout this game. Seems like every other play, he's doing something in the backfield. Already got two sacks, and now here's a tackle behind the line. On second down, Mostert. And he puts his head down and gets up to the 42 for a gain of about six. Not a ton of room available on that one, but he made use of what space was available and gained decent yardage. Backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. On third down, here comes Mostert. 
And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Now we get another look at Washington on offense. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite. Now a loose football. The ball comes out, and this is picked up by the Dolphins. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. And I don't know that that fumble is going to matter a whole lot. You look at the deficit here in the fourth. It doesn't matter. The coach on the sideline is still scratching his head. Yeah, not only scratching his head, but probably writing a note or two about, we're going to address this come practice next week because maybe that's the reason we're down this far. Doesn't matter at this point, but being sloppy throughout the game, not going to help him improve. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Powell. And yet again, it's McLaurin. You got the big lead defensively willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Second down at six now from the 42. Out of the gun, it's Howell. Samuel bringing in the slant. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. He's up now to 80 yards receiving in the ball game, and he's got a first down. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. They'll give him four yards there, and that will bring up second down. And once more, Howe back to the air. Quick slant, Dotson. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 33. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Pal to the air on first and ten. He'll get this into the hands of Antonio Gibson. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. On first and ten, it's Robinson. 
And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Second down and a little more than a yard here. Al now to throw it. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. The sack there by Bradley Chubb. I remember throughout my career here, defensive coaches always say, guys, you got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. The offense on third down, they've hit on half of them, five for 10. This is third and 14. Howell out of the shotgun. And this one dropped in the end zone. Oh, looked like a touchdown, but not to be. And now it's fourth down. Even with such a big lead late, the effort hasn't lapsed one bit. If the offense wants to score some points in this one, they're gonna have to earn it. These guys are not giving up anything. Fourth down, Hal, desperation time. And they hit him as he throws, as this one's going to go straight down to the turf, incomplete. The Commanders went for it, but they cannot pick up the first. And this 10-play drive winds up yielding nothing. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. Two and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 23. On the ground, it's Mostert to start the drive. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Now, that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But even that, this guy is nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. They need 12 here. It's third down. They'll stay on the ground with Mostert. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. Not at all what they envisioned on third down, three yards in the wrong direction. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. The Dolphins will send out the punter now, standing right on his own five-yard line. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Now it's Crowder. Oh, good move. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Commanders will take over with a first and 10. The Washington offense set to take over. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. A good starting spot for Washington as they come up first and 10 at their own 37. Now how? That's going to be caught by Samuel. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Here's second and seven. Al, he'll look to throw it. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. He certainly isn't looking at the scoreboard out there because, to me, all he's concerned about is he analyzing the field and making most of the time left in this game. Deficit's still there, but he's starting to hit them with some big plays. 
And now they're in the hurry up. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. How from the gun. Short throw here to the tight end, Bates. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. And Howell will throw it. That's out wide here for Robinson. And he's going to have a commander's first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. But well, they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. Now a nice throw here right side, he hauls it in. And they move this all the way down to the nine. He got 29 yards that time. Here's Hal. And it's caught. And just shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the one. Second and goal from the one. They'll look to throw again. Touchdown, Washington. Curtis Samuel. A one-yard touchdown reception. And the Commanders have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. And that touchdown puts us in a position to have a discussion, doesn't it? Now it'll be a two-score game after the conversion. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt with a two-score game they're going to have to onside kick it. We'll just see if they've got a miracle up their sleeve. And you wonder what onside kicks they're going to use and in what sequence if they hope to have a chance to win this game. The extra point by Sly is up and good, and that'll make this now an 11-point deficit. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the Dolphins are going to recover. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. And out come the Dolphins now. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. Now a timeout called for by the defense as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now Washington going to use the second of their three timeouts 
as he'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. A yard all they need, but it's third down. They'll try and run here with Mostert. And he is going to have a Miami first down, and the Dolphins are going to win the football game. Game in hand, the offense takes the knee. Second and 11 now. A run with Mostert up the middle. Four yards on the pickup there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well because we've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe to get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. And how about in the NFL? The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. So a victory here for the Miami Dolphins. And they were buoyed, Charles, by a big second half that put this one on ice. So you get the sense that whatever was said at halftime obviously hit home. I think it's a little bit more than that, though. Obviously, there are words that are said, and hey, come on, guys, we have to play better. But sometimes it's just sharpening your execution, sharpening your focus, and maybe doing the thing.